before we get started, let's start up the Rails server and then we'll get in the Rails console after this. Uh, this is mainly to show you that we have not added anything here. So if I hit refresh, you can see we only have our one project. Now I'm going to switch back to the console and type in clear so you can see it a little bit better. And now I'll get into the console. I'm not going into sandbox mode because I want to keep the records that we're going to create here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is put in a very small Ruby script. And if you're not familiar with Ruby, I think that you'll come to love it because it's the closest language I've ever found to plain English. So I think you'll see as I uh, type it out. I want to create 10 projects automatically. So what I'm going to do is say 10 dot times, and that will mean that everything in the coming code block will run 10 times. Then I say do because I want it to do what I'm saying. And then we have to give it some type of iterator variable. So I'm going to call this iterator variable project. And so this is a variable that will essentially keep the, uh, the ID, not really the ID, but the, uh, the number of iterations. So the first time it goes through, you'll have a value of zero. The second time, you'll have a value of one. Project is not necessary. I could call this ASDF and put it inside of these uh, uh, vertical pipes. I like to call it project because that's what we're trying to do is we're creating 10 projects. And now we have access to this iterator variable so we can make them a little bit unique. So after I type that in, I'll hit return and then I'll do our creation script. So type in project, make sure project is a capital because it's gonna be, Ruby's gonna be looking for that. And then create exclamation mark. The exclamation mark is not necessary, it's optional, and typically you'll hear it called bang. So the way you'd read this normally would be project.create bang. And what that does is if there's an error during the creation process, it will show us the exception. So it will halt the process, it'll say, hold on, you did something wrong, you need to go back and fix it. If I leave it at project.create, then it will fail silently. Failing silently is good if this were on production. So if this were the live site, you wouldn't want an error thrown up. Uh, you may want this to fail silently, and then you can go through the error logs and find out, uh, or not the error logs, the regular logs, and find out you know what happened. But in this case, I want it to give us an error if I type something in wrong. And then give the name of the column in the database. In this first case, it'll be title. And I want to say project. And then we're going to do some string interpolation. String interpolation is being able to place some Ruby inside of a string. So in this case, uh, if you look back here at our iterator variable, I want the ability to place this inside of this string. For obvious reasons, I couldn't just do project by itself because it, uh, if I do not use this string interpolation syntax, which is this uh, hash and then uh, curly braces, then Ruby's gonna think it's just a string and I could put anything in there. But when you put this syntax in, Ruby's uh, parser recognizes it and it says, okay, anything inside of here, I'm gonna treat like Ruby. I'm gonna treat like Ruby code. So I could put one plus one in here and it would calculate it as two because it'd treat it like Ruby code. So I'm gonna take our iterator variable. And so this is gonna give us a unique project. So this means we're gonna have project zero, then project one, then project two, all the way down to project nine because we created 10 projects, but it starts at zero. Okay, now I do a comma and then I wanna add a description. Just say my cool description. Okay, close out the, uh, the parentheses and hit end. And unless I have a spelling mistake or something, this should work. So hit return and it appears like this worked. It created all of these 
uh, different records for us. So I'm going to close out by hitting Control D and type in Rails S to start up the server. And let's go back and see what this did for us. So go to the browser, hit refresh, and there you go. Look, it created all these records for us. We have project zero all the way through project nine. And if you click on edit, it filled everything in. So these are all database records, just like we did it manually, except now we did it on an automated basis. So this is how you'd create records in the console. And in the next video, we'll go through how we could do things like editing them or deleting them and querying them, that kind of thing.